Stocks on Wall Street have bounced off their session lows this Monday afternoon. They fell earlier over worries that a new fast-spreading coronavirus strain in Britain could lead to a slower economic recovery. This, of course, coming as lawmakers in Washington are set to vote on a coronavirus relief package. With me to talk about today's moves is David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Thank you so much for being with us on this eventful day. Good to be with you. David, what do you make of today's moves? It looks like the financials are really propping up the Dow and both the S&P and, um, and NASDAQ are now recovering. Well, it's hard to overthink the, the catalyst around the COVID news out of the UK to the extent that there was real market fears as opposed to just short-term trader fears. You'd have to think that the damage would be a lot more significant than what we're seeing, not just where we are after this little intraday recovery, but even three or 400 points earlier, it's not very significant, particularly in the backdrop of a 4,000 point rally that we've had over the last six weeks. So no, I think that there's a number of factors uh, offsetting one another. The market definitely is always prone to a buy the rumor, sell the news dynamic. And to the extent that you got this uh, apparent stimulus relief package agreement out of Congress, of course, most people have known for the last couple of weeks that we were getting to that moment. So you could have a little bit of a sell the news. But you pointed out, I think the biggest news is in the financials. The Fed's announcement that they waited till after market on Friday to announce of the capital adequacy of 33 major financial institutions, their ability to resume stock buybacks, to resume dividend payments back to at least the pre-COVID level, um, that's significant, and you're getting a bounce in financials. So there's a lot of divergence in markets here today. So are the financials a part of your 2021 strategy? Very much so. We divide it up into two categories. One are the more interest rate sensitive. So you get net interest margin. You get more traditional banking metrics. We are big holders of J.P. Morgan which is not only rallying significantly today, but actually has had a monstrous comeback in the last couple months. And we own Truist Financial, which is more of a, a large regional bank, formerly BB&T and SunTrust that merged together. And I think MetLife is the only insurer we own is also really uh, susceptible in that sort of interest rate environment. But then the second category that we're big holders in are the asset managers. They're not rate sensitive. These are not balance sheet businesses. They're very uh, fee oriented. And with all the M&A we expect next year, not to mention the dry powder we know is in private equity and private credit, we think Blackstone and Apollo are some of the most opportunistic holdings out there. What other stocks are you looking at or what other sectors are opportunistic for you at the moment? So again, we are bottom up dividend growth investors. And so we look to individual names that we think have a sustainability of cash flow and a sustainability of the dividends that they're going to pay and grow to us and our clients as shareholders. Uh, from a sector standpoint, that does tend to lead to overweights in financials, energy. Um, it's very hard not to be overweight in energy right now with that weighting having come down so much in the S&P 500. And we think that sector having mostly washed out in 2020. But consumer staples are always something we really like. They're never going to be the market leader or very rarely, but they're also very rarely going to be the market laggard. Well, on that, do you think that dividend investing will make a comeback in 2021 since you know, over this past year, we have seen a lot of dividend cuts. Right. I believe dividend growth investing was a huge thing in 2020 because you're alluding to dividend cuts from companies that were unreliable dividend payers. There are a couple of exceptions, but with the 70 or so dividend cuts in the S&P 500, none of those would have been from companies you considered aristocrats or, or really historically dependable names. So the reason our dividend growth portfolio didn't have any dividend cuts this year is because we're so consciously and intentionally focused on balance sheet and on debt ratios and a, a business model nature that is less cyclical and prone to having to cut. Yes, I do think it'll make a big comeback next year, not only because there's a ton of cash on the balance sheets of companies, stock buybacks are going to be a little more problematic politically. 
but also because I think dividends just consistently stand the test of time as a tax efficient way of returning cash to shareholders. And David, is there anywhere where you are trimming as we head into the new year? What are you selling? Well, we're not big holders of the FANG names. And if we were, we would candidly be trimming there. We had held a position. We had held a position in Apple for many, many years, and we sold it entirely a short while ago, and that was a really big decision for us. But we have to stay valuation conscious, even on companies we love like Apple, and I think some of the other big tech names are phenomenal companies, but have valuation questions about them that make the risk-reward very skewed to me. Um, And so we are trimming in that type of area. And then on the other hand, within technology, we look to old tech names, your Broadcom, certainly your Cisco's, Intel's, even IBM uh, now becoming a really significant player in cloud. And I think that there's great opportunity there with cash flow, a more boring business model for sure. But that's sort of what we like. You like the boring. I like it. Yes. (laughs) Well, David, thank you so much for being with us today. Like I said, it is an eventful day. David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Thank you so much. I'm Yahaira Hawkes, and this is Reuters.